Hey there, welcome back to Caleb's Shed. Tonight I want to impart a little something I think I've learned from taking up this uh, woodworking chindig and, and although I'm not advanced, um, I've learned a lot of lessons in the very early stages about what's super useful and what, what isn't. So I, what I want to do is have two videos, um, one on power tools um, or electric tools uh, and one on uh, hand tools. And what I want to cover off is the three most essential tools to own now. I'm gonna put a caveat on this though, my requirements, my my boundaries for this. So the criteria are this. It has to be cheap, it has to be the most effective tool that it can be for the price. So I'm not talking about specific brands, I'm gonna be talking about you know, in general and you can find your price point and brand within that. So the first thing I'm gonna start with is, is the hand tools. And there's three hand tools I think that are probably the most essential um, things that you can own. Okay? First one is uh, the hand saw. Um, they sell them by the millions because they're so blinking handy. So get yourself a hand saw. Not only can you halve a piece of wood, cut it on an angle, uh, etc. You can cut shoulders on, on tenons with these. Uh, so you can start to begin to make joinery. Well, the one I've got here is a very fine toothed, um, off the shelf saw. Um, these sorts of things are sold by the the bucket load to tradesmen, um, but they probably don't use them for doing joinery, but you can do a really, this a really fine blade, it will do a fine cut. It's pretty much as good as that one there. Pretty much as good as that one there, and that's a Henry Brown and Sons Sheffield Steel, you know, it's, it's a gorgeous bit of, of kit brass back saw, but this will cut just as well as that one. Um, the joy being this costs 15 bucks. Costs about 15 bucks to get, now you, you can, like I said, cut a piece of wood in half, cut a tenon. It's not really great for cutting a big piece of wood in half for that. You need something a little more toothy. You need something with a, pardon me, something with a far more aggressive tooth on it, something like that. But again, uh, two hand saws, 30 bucks, maybe. If, if you're spending that much, you can get them for, for way cheaper. Um, but don't go out and go crazy and, and do this sort of thing. Um, this is for, for crazy people who've started getting into their serious hand tools and that sort of thing. If you get something like this, then you need to get something like a distant number rate for cross cutting and then you get yourself you know, something else for ripping. So just, just be careful with saws, you don't get too crazy because one old saw will lead to another and then you'll have eight of them. And Anyway, that's not the point of the video. The point of the video is to be as effective and as cheap as possible. So uh, Barco Fine Prize Cut 300, it's a really great little saw and you can do some joinery with it. The next one's kind of cheating, okay? The next one is uh, a mallet and a chisel. Now, a chisel can be used on its own, but it's not as useful as a mallet and a chisel. Now, I think these are great because you can cut mortises with them, you can clean up your tenons with them, you can cut out uh, door hinges, uh, recesses, rebates, you can use them to clean up uh, cuts as I've already said. It's, it's a very handy tool to have and you need to probably buy a set of four. Um, and a standard set of four comes in, you know, the basically you know, sort of inch and then the quarters of inch increments all the way down. And uh, or mils if you're into millimeters like we are in the rest of the world. But pretty much the, the, the general standard for making them is in the quarter of an inch measurement. So there, a set of these, somewhere between 40 and up. Um, but you're getting a basket, a chisel for $10. Um, then you go and buy yourself a mallet and a, a good wooden mallet. So don't don't use a hammer on, on a chisel. I mean, you can go and get these ones, the ones that have the, the metal back and use a hammer on them, but that's murder on the ears. Just saying, it's murder on the ears and it's not as enjoyable. Uh, also, it's too much. It's just too much. There's too much weight in a hammer. There's not enough control, whereas with a wooden mallet, you know, you can you can really control your strikes and you can learn to. So that's number two. Saw, chisels, mallet. Now number three, the almighty plane. The Bailey pattern plane. This is a, an Australian made poke. This is a number four. This is a Stanley number five. You'll find all the number fours, the planes in the world will pretty much look like this. And all the number fives will pretty much look like this. Uh, this is from 1950s. This is from probably the 70s or 80s. Uh, the reality is um, size here depends on what you're doing. Uh, the number four is probably the best all rounder. Lots of people say it's the best all rounder in my experience today is I can do a lot of different things with this. I can, I can smooth, I can dimension, I can make surfaces flat. 
this is better at doing flat because it's got a larger surface area. Um, but the thing, the thing about a plane is you can do a lot with you. Do roundovers, you can freshen up the whites, chopping board for crying out loud. There's a whole heap of things you can do with a plane. Um, but the thing about a plane is you've got to learn to tune it. You've got to learn to know how to flatten the sole, set the blade, um, sharpen the iron, uh, it, you know, get the depth right. Watch lots of YouTube videos. This guy called Paul Sellers, he's a genius with a hand plane. He's, he's amazing. He kind of gave me a love and a passion for one of those. And I ended up building a really big hand tool bench, even though I swore I would never get into hand tools. But I've just found it so convenient and easy to use hand tools instead of always turning to a power tool. Because the setup required is a lot less. You can just do a quick something with a, with a hand tool and it's, it's very natural and intuitive. Um, yeah, anyway, so with the with the plane's price point, look, I picked up one the other day um, for five bucks. So admittedly, it's missing the, the cap iron and the actual iron, but I can I can get those for, for not too much more money. Um, you can ask people to give them to you for Christmas, like I did with this number four. Um, yeah, I do have a few of them lying around. Got another one somewhere. Ah, uh, it's not important. But you picked them up somewhere around twenty dollars and up, and that's Australian money. I'm sure in the US you can find them for a penny at a at a, a swap meet. Anyway, they're the three most essential hand tools. I want to cover one more. I guess it's kind of cheating to say it's about the top three and then do a fourth. But the Speed Square is an amazing bit of kit too, and not expensive. Not expensive at all. Very cheap. You can do a lot of things with a Speed Square. Um, and it's also very handy for when you're using power tools. Probably more handy for when you're using power tools than just about any other sort of measuring device you can imagine. So that's very handy. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention with the saw. Every saw by default comes with inbuilt angle measuring for a 90 degree and a 45. So when you need to mark up something, you can notch your little mark on the on the bit of wood and then to get a perfectly flat edge you hold that against the edge of your wood sliding it up and then just draw a line down and that's your perfect 90 degree angle and that's a 45 and that'll do you for most of your standard outdoor rough cutting and most of your indoor rough cutting as well if you want to get really particular you know you get yourself onto uh, all kinds of gauges and, and bevels and, and that sort of thing anyway three most essential tools next I'm going to do a video um, I'll release that pretty shortly after this one on the three most essential power tools to get. And some people might be surprised by what I do there. Anyway, this is Carb Shed. Thanks for joining me. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, do all the regular YouTube things that you're supposed to do. Um, help me grow this this channel, uh, produce more content, etc., etc. Um, yeah, anyway, have a great night or a great day or a great afternoon, wherever you are. Bye.